Now, Law has a bit of a darker past compared to most characters in the series, beginning with his birth in the mining country of Flavance in North Blue. Along with his sister Lammy, he was trained to become a doctor from a very young age by his parents, who were also doctors. In some rather poignant social commentary, the town of Flavance was subjected to poisoning spanning several generations due to the substance they were mining, which was known as amber lead. Law and his sister happened to be at the bottom of this generational poisoning and were destined never to reach adulthood. Believing the disease might be contagious, neighbouring countries sent extermination squads into Flamance, resulting in the death of Law's parents and sister. Law himself managed to escape by hiding amongst dead bodies being shipped away from the country. This of course had a pretty adverse impact on his personality as he became quite nihilistic, wishing to destroy everything, and what's worse, he was still destined to die at around the age of 13. Law would soon meet and join the Don Quixote pirates led by future warlord of the sea, Dolph Flamingo. Law would then encounter Dolph Flamingo's brother, Corazon, who, for the sake of ease, we will be referring to as Corazon for the entirety of the video rather than his real name, Rosinante, just to avoid a bit of confusion. So Corazon was apparently known for hating children and proceeded to throw Law out of a window. A nihilistic Law then swore revenge on Corazon, managing to stab him before fleeing the pirates in fear of Dolph Flamingo's retribution for actions taken against his brother. The Don Quixote pirates would catch him and bring him before Dolph Flamingo, where he discovered that Corazon did not die from the stab wound he inflicted, and even more surprisingly, that Dolph Flamingo officially invited Law to join his crew. It was clear that for some reason, Corazon had said nothing of the incident. And then to top off this day of fantastic fortune, Dolph Flamingo informed Law that there was a devil fruit power in the world that could allow him to live. That devil fruit being the Ope Ope no Mi, and if Law managed to find it before he died, he would be trained to become the right hand man of Dolph Flamingo. Time passed until Law only had one year left to live, and in a seemingly mundane conversation, Law revealed to a young buffalo in Baby 5 that his real name was in fact Trafalgar D. Waterlaw. Corazon overheard this and immediately carried Law away to speak with him in private. Corazon warned Law that if he really was a D, then he needed to leave his crew right away, and especially, especially, never to let Dolph Flamingo know his real name. In this exchange, Corazon also revealed that his true goal was to stop the madness of his brother Dolph Flamingo. Sometime later, Corazon would take Law on a last-ditch effort journey to cure his illness. After being rejected by every hospital they visited, they would receive a call from Doflamingo, informing them that he had found the location of the Ope Ope no Mi and had a plan to steal it. Corazon, understanding his brother's real intentions for the fruit, then formed a counter plan to steal the fruit first and feed it to Law so that he could heal himself and save his own life. And Corazon was quite successful in doing so, even if he did have to force feed the fruit to Law. Now this is probably a good time to briefly go over the Ope Ope no Mi. This fruit is probably one of the most powerful in the One Piece world, granting the user several extraordinary abilities. The first of which is the power to create a room, in which the user is able to transplant any objects he pleases, including people and including the user themselves. So for example, the user could reposition body parts on a person, completely remove parts, including internal organs, or even teleport themselves with another object in the created room. Secondly, while in the room, the user is able to switch people's minds and bodies. This was used to great hilarity to switch some of the Straw Hats bodies on Punk Hazard. And if that wasn't enough, this Devil Fruit has an ultimate ability known as the Immortality Operation. This allows the user to perform an operation on someone else and render them, yet, immortal. However, it does cost the life of the user performing the operation. It is primarily for this reason that people were willing to pay a price of 5 billion berries for this devil fruit. So we can gather from this that Dolph Flamingo's plan was to have Law eat the Ope Ope no Mi and trick Law into performing the immortality operation on him in complete disregard for the child's life. After securing the fruit, an exhausted Corazon collapsed and asked a favor of Law to deliver a secret letter to the Marines. This action cleared up Corazon's previous actions, particularly the one where he threw Law out of a window. This was done because Corazon felt it was his duty to stop children entering the world of Dolph Flamingo and to dissuade them by any means at his disposal. Law agreed to take the letter. Unfortunately, he delivered it to the worst possible person, a marine named Virgo, who happened to be a double agent for Dolph Flamingo. 
The Don Quixote pirates then arrived on the island and Doflamingo used his birdcage technique to prevent Corazon and Law from escaping. Corazon, resigning himself to his fate, hid Law in a treasure chest before being shot dead by his own brother. Law escaped and ended up on the neighboring Swallow Island where the Heart Pirates would be born. A young Shachi and Penguin were bullying a mink named Beppo. Law proceeded to beat up the two bullies, prompting Beppo to become interested in joining him. Shachi and Penguin also became interested in following Law out of admiration of his abilities. Together they sailed through the Grand Line, gathering more crewmates until they made it to the halfway point of Sabadi Archipelago. Here, Law briefly fought along rivals Monkey D. Luffy and Eustace Kid against the Marines after Luffy punched a Celestial Dragon. The exact outcome of the battle was never shown, however, Law did manage to escape the island along with the rest of the Worst Generation. Law would next be seen at the Paramount War, along with the rest of the Worst Generation who had gathered to watch the outcome. Unlike his counterparts, Law became directly involved in the war as he sailed into Marineford to facilitate the escape of Luffy with his submarine. He then proceeded to operate on Luffy's wounds using his Devil Fruit abilities. The reason why Law put his and his crew's lives at stake to save Luffy wasn't known at the time, but in retrospect it is because both Luffy and Law have that mysterious D in their name. It's also for this reason that after the time skip, Law approached Luffy about forming an alliance to defeat one of the four emperors of the New World, Kaido. Luffy agreed surprisingly quickly and so began a comedically uncomfortable alliance for Law. It should also be noted that at this point, Law had become one of the seven warlords of the sea. After succeeding in beating and capturing Caesar Clown, the next part of the plan to defeat Kaido was apparently to take down Don Quixote Doflamingo, who was supplying Kaido with artificial devil fruits and weapons. However, after the newly formed alliance arrived on Dressrosa, it soon became apparent that defeating Doflamingo was the only real plan for Law. Since witnessing the death of Corazon, Law had never forgiven him and swore revenge. His real plan didn't even involve particularly beating Doflamingo himself. Law's plan was designed to enrage Kaido to the point where the Emperor himself would dispose of Doflamingo. So it's fair to say that Law had a bad string of luck in Dressrosa, finding himself in a 2v1 direct conflict with Doflamingo and Marine Admiral Fujitora. With the help of the Straw Hats, Law would be able to escape and they began their proper assault on Dressrosa. Now the exact events of Dressrosa are quite complicated and need an entirely separate video to go through. But Law ended up defeating Doflamingo's right-hand man Treble and inflicted some serious damage on Doflamingo himself before being utterly defeated by him. With serious injuries, he was then forced to place his hopes on Luffy, being able to defeat Doflamingo on his own, which Luffy eventually did. After the battle, Law had a brief conversation with former Fleet Admiral Sengoku, who had arrived to arrest Doflamingo. They had a brief discussion about Corazon, who Sengoku fondly remembered. Sengoku then encouraged Law to lead his own life, as it's what Corazon would have wanted. Law would then witness the formation of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, and sailed with them to the island of Zo. There he was reunited with his crew, and despite his goal of beating Doflamingo being achieved, he decided to make good on his promise to help Luffy beat Kaido, and became part of the Ninja Pirate Mink Samurai Alliance. The last thing we know about him is that his intention was to sail to Wano and await Luffy's arrival.